you've dialed in to Box and Brews, you might hear something you can use. Like tips on your cash or tips on the suds. You're going to want to use the smarts of these studs. Because they know the brews. And they know the box. And they know they can't help the stubborn fucks. So listen up, because shit's not funny. And save yourself some beer money. Bucks and brews. Bucks and brews. And brews. Bucks and brews. Welcome back to Bucks and Brews. Um, Nick, we saw each other for you being out of town a, a little bit there this weekend, didn't we? Same. Yeah, that was a uh, was a quick turnover. It was, but you had a good time on your trip, huh? I did. Yeah, I was saying it was eighty five degrees, sunny. <clears throat> Camera people could see how tan I am. <laughs> so, I think uh, I think before we get into our episode tonight, we should talk about what we're drinking. Yeah, um, I'm drinking city of byron center tap water when's the when's the last time you've heard i i might go grab a beer because it feels awkward but um i'm also drinking tap water i felt a little off yesterday and today so i'm like yeah drinking's not a good idea so just a water night for me we should have an even more spirited argument i'm sure tonight let's <laughs> say because this time we'll be sober yeah it'd be weird yeah um so that that's different for us you know yeah. thank you byron township for your delicious water right um so you got back from vacation and immediately we had an event on saturday say yeah immediately um i mean gosh eight hours later nine hours later <laughs> say um so for those that don't know we were at the byron township comic con which you know is a it, it's more like a uh swap meet maybe um they have some comic ad, like the 501st was there obviously mm -hmm. uh dressed up in their star wars costumes and you know there were some other groups but for the most part it's a lot of vendors just selling toys and, and comics and stuff yeah and i mean promoting yeah comics like the books that they wrote or yeah. stuff like that um and you know i i enjoyed it quite a bit actually even though like we were working for the most part but like it felt like because because the people that showed up, so many of them were in costume. Yeah, right? I mean, and so when you go to the con, you have let's just call it a thousand people, and then you know five of them are in costume. Where this, it was like you have five hundred people, and I felt like half. I mean, it wasn't half, but it was. I, I'd say like I felt like a third of the people were in costume. But there were a lot. So, um, I enjoyed the little kids coming dressed up. Yeah. We we definitely promoted pops and pennies quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, got rid of some some swag material. We kept our promise to our uh, TikTok viewers. Yes, you know it's funny because uh, Mike's sitting there next to me while we're doing this, and he goes, "You really do need Nick because you don't want to talk." <laughs> I'm like, I'm not that guy. I'm not yeah. outgoing. I don't. I just kind of want to sit in the corner and do my thing. Right. But Nick sees people and immediately he's like, "Hey, come over here. I need to tell you about something." <laughs> say yeah and people would just go i mean the kids even i mean you drew the kids in quickly you just hold up a. we're not groomers i'm gonna say that right now but you'd hold up a shiny sticker and they right. just run over because they wanted a shiny sticker yeah well and, you know and we how many adults would look and they would just look and then all it takes is for me to just go hey how's it going great and then they'll come they'll comfortably walk over and yeah. great let me tell you about what we have right i mean and uh you know so it's just it's welcoming and, and that's i don't know that's what i do on a constant well the nice pull in for us was hey do you want to win some free stuff hey say um you know say we and we learned we learned a lot about what we could do to help ourselves next time right yeah um you know we're working on the three jar system um i've been googling like crazy trying to figure out i know, gotta get you some jars yeah that and i mean i'm working on other types of jars and then i you know the uh, titty roll cans they make those and so like the banks yeah so i had a titty roll bank when i was a kid exactly was awesome. so you know we could throw bucks and brew or pops and penny stickers on those yeah. and things like that and then of course i have a i used to own a t-shirt company so i can make stickers and so right we can put um you know investing slash savings and then um spending and giving right on on them and you know i was thinking i was like hey i'm looking at one of your cups right now and it's like we you, people sell just you know random stickers for like superhero stuff and oh, yeah. like, we'll just throw those out and hey decorate your cup and have fun with it and um you know but leave this part alone so that way you can see it so right um you know i i wanted to sell dice and then my my wife was like mm -hmm, and but i should have right because i mean 
The amount of people that came over just because like there was dice on the table. <clears throat> they were this? excited What's about that. What's going with this? And I'm like, yeah, we, you know, um, because right, we didn't make a dime. No, um, we're really good at not making money at this. We are. Let's <laughs> say, um, you know, but but it was really fun for us, um, you know, and I've done one of the craft fair when I when I did my own stuff or whatever, and you know, I position maybe it was and people get into like, hey, I want this specific table for this reason. But I tell you, I mean, I, this one flew by the time, you know, the, the one I did, I was like, forget this. This is stu- I've been here 10 hours too long, you yeah. know, and this just, it, it flew. So it was really quick. Um, you know, the more I think about like, hey, putting jar systems together and packaging or whatever, uh, the more I'm like, that's more shit we have to carry. <laughs> it is. So, um, you know, shout out to Jack Razor who showed up and had uh his stuff out halfway through um a little more than halfway through yep but he uh is say you know we promoted his stuff that was uh and, and hopefully hopefully something comes of that for him um well even he was focused on i'm not going to sell anything i'm not going to sell anything which yeah spoiler he did not sell anything right but again i mean he brought his stuff there after the majority of the people are already come and gone because the most of them came in the morning yeah i say up until probably because it lasted until three and i I would say probably the first two and a half hours i mean we had so much traffic the last two and a half hours it was like you see a little bit here and there yeah but um yeah i I was really surprised by that people just show up and they want that deal like right then so um but yeah hopefully you know people saw his stuff we talked about him and you know maybe i'll get some sales out of it yeah Again, it cost him nothing, so we're just trying to help out somebody that's been good to us. I say helped us out like crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I say vacation, wonderful time. Gosh, you know, I, I, I do it for mental health reasons now versus more of getting away, yeah. you know. Um, and I got we got fortunate. It was just beautiful weather the whole time. So uh budgeting wise didn't go as planned, but nothing for that trip went as planned in the first place so um and then you know i I say comic con uh man there's so many people coming to the detroit con that's crazy motor city yeah yeah that's uh, motor city usually gets a good haul that's did just see rowdy burns is coming yeah i did yes i did um and uh the guy that plays mary poppins I can't even think of his name. Yeah, Michael Rooker. Yeah, yeah, he's coming. Um, at least that's what I, I seen the yeah. announcement. Uh, there's just quite a few really awesome things happening. Um, and again, I I enjoy. It's weird because how much I don't know about this stuff, and like mm-hmm. listening to you guys talk, I just laugh about it and go, yeah, I have no clue, right? And then people talk to me like I have any idea, and I'm like, no. Nah. Well, right. people came over to talk to you because you were sitting next to the five hundred first booth, right. and they thought you might know something. Yeah, I'm like, ah. <laughs> He left. He went over there. Right. Like uh Dave will be back in like an hour. He's you did a little bit, you did quick trooping it. Uh, very quick. Yeah. You and Mike both. Um, you know, we will probably try to put a challenge up again. And if we meet the challenge, we'll you know, we'll do it again. Um Yeah, I had fun. That was a fun yeah. little thing. Yeah. Uh Gavin and Deanna showed up. They did not have a booth this year. Yep. And basically, Gavin said two things. One, it's cold as hell, mm-hmm. and loading and unloading all that stuff sucks in the cold. And two, he's never made a bunch of money on it. Right. Like, you know, after costs of everything, he's he might clear 60, 70 bucks. And to give up a day off yeah. when you're a business owner, 70 bucks isn't where it's at. Right. And you, you know, you're saying you're hoping to make a bunch more. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, we uh so we have we have we'd like to get ourselves put out there a little bit more, right? Um but- we haven't looked at our listeners stuff since then, but I'm hoping we got a few more people that listen to some things. Um, and then move forward to Monday, Tuesday, um, today, right? Mm-hmm. So today I did a first for myself, right? I went to my first ever sheriff sale. Yeah. I um, saw you post about yeah, that. That's a, it, that's, that's a thing for you, isn't it? What's that? Like that feeds into your gambling oh mentality, my doesn't it? Goodness. It, yeah, it totally does. Like it's, it's, it, the difference is, is like when you're gambling with with that kind of money so a sheriff sale right is is a house that's been foreclosed on mm-hmm. um and the bank wants to be paid off and like when i say cash like i literally mean cash like this is like right now yeah this isn't i can go get fine like so you know the 
the everybody that shows up and it's funny because the places you're going to rob it'd be that one because <laughs> <laughs> everybody has all this money everybody has a check right and and it's for the minimum of whatever they're buying so um let's just say it you know the house is going up for sale for 80 grand every person in that spot has an, a check for 80 thousand and then if it goes up to like 85 you can make up the difference with like another check or, or you know you have you have an hour to go get the rest of the money but you have to show up with the minimum if you were purchasing okay. right um and so like looking around and like wow this is this is uh like all of a sudden you start putting money and you're like damn there's some money out here. yeah um you know on my way out there i was talking about the price how many was, people were there there was only three at this one this was in the okay, middle so of nowhere small one. yep um and honestly uh the original price was twenty thousand three hundred and nine dollars okay and so and my morning was fun for me also very exhilarating um so i, I i'm assuming these things this thing's it, told it starts at 10 ends at 11 um depending on however many you have and there's only one mm -hmm. um normally the lady puts it out ahead of time she actually put it out this morning at eight o'clock in the morning okay quickly do research i'm like man this thing's worth 130 to 160 thousand bucks they want 20 i, I gotta go to get, i have to get this um so i i have i've dropped my kid off and i'm like crap i can't just leave like all right if i go to my bank well it's an hour and five minutes well officially bank doesn't open till nine okay so now if i take an hour and five and let's say it takes them five minutes to cut my check i'm there at 10 10 um so I, I dropped my kid off drove all the way out to alpine which is the farthest north of my banks will go which so i'm still 45 minutes out but so i'm standing there three minutes or well it was five minutes to open standing there like it's black friday like waiting at the door right if it was my normal bank they'd open up for me because be like man he doesn't just stand at the door he needs something right, right. um they took forever and then of course i get the new guy no nothing against him it's just like he doesn't really know what he's doing. Right, dude. Hey, I need to check. Like, I have to go and I have to go now, right? Like, you have this. And then the, the branch manager is like, all right, well, oh, I got to go take care of the vault. No, no, he he needs help. Like, you need to be here. And then she gets on the phone and he's like, well, she's busy. And I was like, I don't, I'm not trying to be a dick, bud. Like, I don't care, right? Tell her to get over here to fix this now. Like, you're going to cost me a hundred grand. You're a customer standing here <laughs> needing service and they aren't doing right. it. Right. And uh, then she comes over and she's like, well, if I'm not available, like this other girl is just to help train you and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, good. Now, you know, for next time. <laughs> like, so I got the check. I drove up there and I had four minutes to spare. Okay. So I run through the front door, get to talk to the security, you know, the, the cop that's there. And he's like, no, it's going to be around the backside of the building. So I run back to my car, drive around. I was like, hey, I'm here for the sheriff's sale. She's like, nope, it's held in the court office. So I drive all the way back to the front. And I called the lady and I was like, look, I'm here. Where the hell do I go? Because this guy's telling me, and she goes, nope, just right in front of the courts. Like, I'll be there. And so I, I had the officers on the, he hears and he goes, yeah, I guess you're in the right spot. I was like, great. And then she's like, well, I'm going to give it 15 minutes and then we'll start. And I was like, shit. All that rushing around for nothing. Yeah. I was like, and she's like, if you're ever going to be late or whatever, just give me a call. And I, you know, as long as I know you're coming, I was like, great. Now we know. Right. But now I know where to go and things like that. And this was again, New Agu, which is, People that don't know, um, Grand Rapids is like the hot spot, right? This is an hour plus north. Um, there's one house every half mile. You know, like yeah. it's just very, it's a rural area, right? Yes. The name of the company had the words rural service in it, you know, like that did the loan. Um, anyway, so get in there and all right, bidding starts. First guy. First guy's like, yep, I'll open it up. Guy goes 500 above. I go, you know, 500, 500. I go 1,000. He goes 500. I go 1,000. He goes 500. We get to a point, and I was like, all right. I'm fine. Like, I, I'm running my numbers through my head. And, and he, of course, he's trying to scare me out of it. So he's like, well, it's got back taxes owed on it. And I'm like, cool. You know, because it's a, it's a scare tax. Yeah. Oh, shit, you don't know how much, like, because he knows I don't know how much it is. Right. But I'm in a rural area. and taxes are cheaper all right and so i'm sitting here going okay maximum is three years right because then it would have gone to tax sale versus sheriff sale so i'm like all right 3600 bucks whoop dee um and you know so i was like all right 
and, and I play I play in random things too. You know, I was like, there's gonna be a, a, a water lean or something on it. Right? But granted, it's a well, but I was like, there's gonna be some other lean things that's gonna be on it. Not a big deal, small. So as I'm driving up there, I called friends that do this every day, like every week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like I have a buddy that he he's averaging one and a half houses a week on sheriff's age <laughs> from six different counties. Okay. And uh told him the price for 20 and it's worth like one. And he's like, are you sure it's a first lien position? I was like, shit, I don't know. I go, how the hell do I figure that out? And he's like, well, I do it myself. And he goes, look, do you have a title company that will do stuff? I was like, Hey, I'm not trying to cut you short. And he goes, no, you got to get on the phone with the title. So I was like, I'll call you back. Call my title. And I was like, Hey, I need this run. And she goes, yeah, let me see what I can do. Couldn't find it right. Take 15 minutes. She goes, yep. First and only Great. So now I know I have a first lien position. Now I know for sure. Like, I'm buying a good, you know, cause you don't want to buy a second right? because then you have to pay the first off. So like if, if there's a first on it for a hundred and I paid 20 for the second, and it's only worth one thirty. I mean, buy you, a good yeah, deal, you right? Money. Like, um, you know, so, but I found that out. So I bid the guy and I got yeah, to a point. Let, let's back up for a minute yeah. there. So you were dumbing down things when I was talking debt ceiling. Let well, me dumb these down. Please. Okay. So you have, this is the first lien. Yep. So basically meaning that it's a first mortgage. Correct. And if, the, if like you had said, if they had a, if this was the second mortgage, it was 20,000 and they had a, you know, first mortgage for a hundred thousand. Now you're not making anything if it's worth 130. Correct. So basically what we're saying is, you know, knowing that the only thing owed on this house is that 20,000, that's where you're looking to make your money from. Correct. So even if you, let's say bought it for 50, you're still getting a good deal. Yep. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. And and so like seconds can come from HELOCs. They can come from lines of credit. They yeah. can come from, uh, I mean, you can do a refinance of a second like that, but those are your normal things that you'd find. Right. And that's when it's that low, but you know, the lady had bought it back in 2007. Here it is 2023. The numbers kind of added up to where it should be. Um, so like I was very confident with being a first at that point. Um, and I, you know, so again, like when you show up, it's, it's strictly cash. And so do do you see pictures? No, you can't go look at the house. So you have no idea. So you can look at like Google and right. And again, 2007, there was no listing photos. There's no anything of this thing. So, uh, I called a friend that lives up there this morning at like 8am and I was like, Hey, how far are you from this? Not far. I can be there by this. We video chatted. They look through the windows for me because there's no cars there. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's no no trespassing stuff. Technically, there's no entering on the window. So, and it's already been. But you didn't enter. Correct. It's so already you been, didn't enter. Yeah. Let's say they, they videoed in mm-hmm. and uh, it was, there was a couple of weird things that I could see, but I didn't know anything. So, um, but it, it's been winterized. How much land? No, it's actually water view. Okay. So, um a normal lot i guess okay, you know yeah. not even a, not even a quarter acre type like an eighth of an acre whatever it would be um but still i mean yep three bedroom one bathroom from what we know right i mean it's decent square footage i actually had an addition um plus a big shed and so but i got to a point where you know we're bidding we're doing stuff and uh you know we're kind of talking and uh the, the lady asked me if i was out it's like you have this guy who's been asked if he's done bidding twice and he's just like i don't know and uh so she asked me and i was like nah, not yet right like I, just give me time doing some numbers in my head break up my phone and i'm like because i'm like hey how much is a well if that's bad how much is a septic if that's bad i have to know my numbers and i didn't have time to figure it out just I mean, nobody had time i mean you could find this stuff for four four weeks ago because yeah. everything has to be posted and, and then you could do your research on things and that there's people that do this full time. Me, I just it was a last minute thing. Right. I mean, and so um, you know, the guy and the guy's like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. So finally I look at the guy and I was like, Look, I'll stop upbidding you if you're willing to sit and have lunch and, and give me a bunch of knowledge and figure out how the hell to do this better. All right. I was like, I'll I'll stop. Um, he goes, I can do that. I was like, Great. Uh, the other guy, he's like, well, we'll see what this guy does or whatever. And I was like, so I stopped. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it, it closed. And the, the, the guy that was sitting or whatever, he's just like, ha, you just bought a trailer that can't be titled. 
and it's it's an airstream on the inside and they built a house around it okay but the airstream has been cut open and all that so in theory it's legally a, a trailer so you can't title it you can't get a mortgage on them um they're very hard i guess let's say they are because i i actually we own one right and so it's just there's so much negative to it and I, like my instant reaction to the guy was like even though I didn't win, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, first of all, I got it for, you know, a decent price. I was like, he can, he can land contract the thing out, which somebody's going to, he still could Airbnb it. He can rent it. And like, I just listed off like three and he's like, yeah, but it's this. And I was like, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, buddy. Like, yeah. what, what do you, like, you're laughing that he just spent money. He still gonna Sure. He's not going to make the 130, 160 that he thought, but he'll, in theory, if he does it right, and he wants to land contractor for thirty years, he'll still make good money. You know, it's like so. Um, you know, he can, he'll easily double. It. And there's cash buyers; he could probably just go get fifteen grand right now. Oh yeah. Um, and so, I you know I'll I'll, uh, I'll reach out to that guy and and we'll we'll talk about that because he had he had to go get the the update that I uh, that I made him pay, which you could pay in personal check, and I, he had to drive quite a way. Uh, like I had personal checks in my car and I'm just like, yeah, and, and you didn't want to have to drive anywhere. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I just, I was 45 minutes to my bank, right? Like I can't be back in an hour because you have one hour, like you have until 11 o'clock in theory. Right. Um, and she started 15 late. So, um, you know, I just, I was concerned about that. Um, and cause I had pulled out a lot of cash in my pocket and I was like, can't pay cash. And she's like, no, <laughs> And uh, yeah. yeah, we kind of shared a laugh on that one. And uh, but I was like, no, it's all right. I got to check. Um, so I didn't win it, but I learned um, things I need to do, things to get me prepared. Um, I'm not disappointed I didn't get it, mm-hmm. but I also am right. Like I'm, I'm st- like I didn't, I haven't put any more thought into what the actual numbers could be now that I know the information. Like, yeah. so I mean, as an Airbnb, it could have been pretty badass, and I probably could have made money, but it's it's an hour from me. I don't invest that way. It's not my normal thing. It was one of those where this is kind of where I'm at. Um, I'm willing to take this, this cash risk, like, and we'll see what happens, you know, uh, and, and, and the, the learning, hopefully, you know, he'll keep up on his end of the bargain. So we'll see in like Aunt Sue's house. Um, Matt's buying that off land contract. Cause it's a trailer. Yeah. And we can't get, alone against it i don't know how aunt sue got alone against it other than she dealt with a shady ass bank right um but, well i mean it's, again i told you the name of the bank was rural something services right like, well this one is an actual big bank but oh, they're really? shady as fuck yeah it's north point oh nice yeah, yeah. yeah. i don't know how the hell they floated that because nobody i've talked to can float it well back in the day there was different mm-hmm. rules and this isn't that far back in the day no really yeah. Oh, well i mean it was 2005 or six okay well back then they were giving out loans like candy they were I mean, so that's why. Right? And I mean, the loan was awful terms. Yeah. Just awful. Like well, seven or eight percent. And and right back when rates were, well, granted, oh five <laughs> rates were four, you know, so um yeah, you'll you'll find that type of a thing. It, and so again, but again, if if I offer you again, we talk about affordable housing. So if I turn my money and I double it and I offer it to you on a land contract and I can make your payments work. If I treat you like a normal American, mm-hmm. I'm going to be rich. Like, mm-hmm. you know, because think about it. Well, hey, you know what? You can only afford 600 a month. I'll tell you what, David, I can make that happen. We're going to do 600 a month. It's going to be a 50 year note. So you're paying for 50 years, right? Like, I don't, I'll make anything work. Yeah. At that point, like, I already, I own it free and clear. Mm-hmm. You're going to pay everything on it. And if not, I foreclose on the same thing I already own, right? right? Like, it just takes time. So, the, like, so to me, that's it, it, not a bad exit strategy. It's a great, it's a great exit strategy. And again, if he wants to Airbnb, he can. There's no rules, regulations, anything that says you can't own this type of a thing. Right. So, um, you know, I think that. But again, that that guy's business is his business, and this is how he structures things. It just, it was. I was upset the fact that he's laughing right at the guy that just spent money, and like he patted him on the back, which I think was the the slap in the face, right? Like, yeah. All you had to do is be like, "Ha, oh, it's an airstream. Ha, huh? way to go." But you know, you want to be a dick about it. Like, and it's like, man, to me, I hope, and I told the guy, I was like, I hope you fucking find him again, rub it in his face. Here's a land contract, buddy. Here's how much I'm making an Airbnb, buddy. 
Yeah, but you'll never be able to sell it. <laughs> okay, I've doubled my money. Who gives a <laughs> shit? I mean, right. Like, that's the kind of shit. Because, you know, again, it's right across from the water, right? Right. So, and that's the other thing. You don't have to pay water taxes, and you can still get the views and all that. So, so when so. we're talking water, are we talking like a small lake or? Yeah. So, yep. Up in, I mean, Nuago has all those small they lakes do. and yep. things like that. So, yep. Um, I don't, it, it's not, I, it might be a, all sports. I didn't even look into it because I didn't care. Yeah, yeah. I just looked at the numbers and quickly was like, I can make this work. <laughs> it's, well, and like you said, you can sell those on a land contract. 100%. That, right. That's not an issue. Right. You just can't get a loan for it. Right. Well, I mean, right. It, you can. It's just, I mean, and honestly. It's, it's difficult. I say, and you're, because it was difficult because you guys are in a rural area. And so it's it's yeah. just, they're they're hard they're hard to find. And the easier I can make it for somebody to buy, the better it's going to be for me. Right? So what, what we ended up doing with Aunt Sue's house, because she still owed money on it. Yep. Was we took a loan against my mother's house, yep. paid off the loan that she had, yep. my aunt, and Matt's running it out on land contract. And basically, he's just paying the mortgage off yep. because he's a good family friend. Mom wanted to help him out. And that's that she's not getting anything extra from it. It's just this is what it is. Just yeah. Is she well, she's paying interest on it, right? For her house. I mean, she's not. Well, but he's paying it. He's paying. Okay, everything. so he. Yeah. So whatever she refied at, he's yeah, paying. That. He's paying everything. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, and taxes, taxes, and, and yep. insurance, is, and all of that. And so exactly, you made it work for somebody, and it's working perfectly. Like, and and you're not an investor. You're not a, right. like granted, you didn't make any money. You're not going to. That's fine. Like, so hey, I bought a shit thing, and I have to get rid of it, and I did it for free. It sucks, but it, at at forty thousand dollars, it's nothing, right? Like. Um, you know, it, had I had, had I not been flipping these houses and had just the shit ton of liquid cash I used to have, yep. I probably would have been more aggressive. Right. Mm -hmm. Because knowing that, like knowing that fact, I'm just sitting here going, Hmm, okay. Like, so I have money that I'll get paid back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So think about it. If I write a seven, eight, 10% mortgage on land contract and I mean, I'm when you when you pay when you buy sixty thousand you're gonna pay a hundred and twenty back right like yeah. or whatever the heck it might depending on the interest rate so I would literally double my money sure it takes thirty years but seven percent I'm getting my inflation right I'm getting everything out of it like it doesn't matter to me right like so and it's just it's a matter of how people think about it so well again we look at a lot of these things so you know dickhead up there is turning this into oh. some personal affront to him because this guy's bidding and he wants it and then he can't get it so somehow he's trying to turn a win out of a loss and right. making fun of the guy for paying for a fucking trailer well the, the worst and it's funny because i don't know the guy i met that i offered lunch to i've heard his name quite a few times which is kind of funny. he doesn't know i know of him mm -hmm. because i have friends that do this and they're like this is the guy that does it i do this and this is the third biggest player right mm -hmm. And so this guy that bought it, he's one of the biggest players. Like, I know he doesn't know I know that. Right? Right. Like, I won't, I won't let him know. Um, you know, because and these guys don't give information. I want you to know that. Like, you would think you're, but you're really there for yourself, and that's what separates me so much differently, <clears throat> right? Because I walked in, I was like, man, I was like my my title says it's first lean position. You, you, yeah, because I want that reassurance. Well, I don't know, you know, like, and I was like. Okay, like they just won't share that stuff, right? And then he tried to do the whole tax thing. And I was like, yeah, okay, you're dumb. Like, it, I get what you're doing, but that's why I bit him up <laughs> and say, and then finally got to. It. But, um, you know, so to me, and you know, again, the guy, the guy knowing that it's a trailer, right? He mm -hmm. didn't give that information away. These guys don't give the information away because had you told me it was a trailer, I would have just known right there. I'd be like, okay, like yes, I'm not, or yes, I'm bidding, or no, I'm not. And then um, I'll say it, I guess. Uh, so the up the up bid that I did, so he'll he actually has the opportunity to go get it back. Okay. Um, there's like a legal way around or legal way to do it. So the bank can only make what they are owed. Okay. The rest of it goes to the person because technically they sold the house, right? Mm -hmm. um, minus their fees. But so now. If if that person claims their money, then they get it. If they don't claim their money, then that money goes and sits, and you can go claim that money, saying, "Hey, this found is money." Exactly. Well, the thing is, is this person was deceased, mm -hmm. so now it's almost so he could like, 
in theory, he's just going to go back and get the amount of money that I outbid him. It's just going to take him six months to get that money back or whatever it's going to take. Right. right? Um, and with the process, so it's normally a six month sheriff's or so you have a six month redemption period after that. Well, being that it's already winterized, you can call it um, abandoned. So you can go to the courts and, and say, Hey, uh, it's abandoned. I want to take possession within a month. Right. Um, and so you'll get it within one month versus six months and the courts will do that type of stuff. So he'll be able to just get in there, get this thing ready for summer. I mean, I, and I asked him, I was like, what are you going to do with it? And he's like, I don't know. Um, you know, I, if it was me again, Airbnb up in that area will be just fine. Mm-hmm. You know, even if he does, I don't know, a hundred bucks a night and he only fills, you know, fills up half of it. He'll, he'll make his money back in the first year. Yeah. Um, granted he has to put money into it if he's going to Airbnb it, but if he didn't Airbnb, it, if somebody was living there, right? Let's be clear about that. Somebody was living in there. They passed. So somebody will take it. Somebody else will live there. Yeah. <laughs> and you can sell a land contract as is and go, hey, you want it? You fix it up, right? That's all you have to do. So, um, yeah. So, it was, you know, but I, I learned quite a bit today. Um, and I, I learned how to do a few things. So it's just, to me, it was knowledge, right? I mean, I, I spent... I just filled up or whatever, but I spent a half tank of gas there and yeah. back, right? Like in some time, I don't care. Didn't bother me at all, right? Because uh, it's a sweet education. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then now you you started softball. Uh, we're doing workouts. Um, first day of tryouts is the thirteenth of March. Oh yeah. So just over a month. Um, I'm actually looking really forward to the season good um chris and i get along pretty good which is you know nice i mean we always do in the off season it's during the season when we have some issues yeah um but he realizes it i mean he realizes some of his shortcomings the last couple years so he's said that he's going to fix those things and if he does great we'll do just fine yep if he doesn't we're going to have some very serious conversations this year because you know nick you've known me as a coach for a long time and i love this and i have a passion for this but i've never really got to just sit back and have fun right coaching has never just been fun this team is the most fun i've ever had they're not my favorite team because my favorite team my daughter was on sure but for coaching a team that does not have my daughter this is my favorite team yeah well that's i mean and it's because these kids are technical players right yeah they are all you have to do is the stuff that we enjoy doing and when we coach god when we're teaching kids how to slide still and we're teaching kids how to swing a bat (laughs) like making sure they ate lunch right you know and and giving rides home let's say the most basic things and and um there's something when you get to that level right i mean what we were doing was more in the juniors program but (laughs) on a high school level you know it's funny because uh I always look up drills and stuff. Mm-hmm. And our biggest issue at Coopersville is the girls don't want to watch the ball all the way, either to the bat or to the catcher's glove. Sure. And that's something my daughter was always great at. Caitlin Whitley was perfect at. I mean, she would sit there and just stare in a catcher's glove. Sure. Um, I got one kid at Coopersville that's really good at it, who also wears number five like my daughter did. Yeah. So that's a running joke. But uh, most of them just... When they decide it's not something they're going to swing at, they just don't look at it anymore, which then, of course, leads to the bad habit of when you are swinging, you're not looking at it. Right. And it pisses me off more than anything. I mean, that is the one thing you can absolutely control. Mm-hmm. You can control whether you see the damn ball. Yep. So, putzing around on Instagram the other day, and I see this drill. They had a win- mini wiffle ball machine, which I have. Yeah. I bought it my second year at Godwin. And, of course, when I left, that went with me. And they would fill the machine up with balls and for them, any white ball that came out, the girls had to catch okay. every other ball. They had to watch all the way back. Hmm. So Chris didn't have white balls, but he had a whole bunch of yellow balls. So the yellow balls you have to catch. Yeah. It's just some of them, of them. It's not because oh. we got to make sure, you know, it's mixed up. Otherwise they're trying to catch everything. And they're not really working the drill. Sure. They actually got a little irritated on Sunday that he didn't pull the machine out and have him do it. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Because they want to be better. Yeah. And when they get lazy on it, 
him or I are going to bark at him. Cause, and he knows I'm going to bark at him for not watching. Cause that, again, that's the thing that pisses me off the most. You are in complete control of that. Yep. <clears throat> no. Um, I say, and that's, you know, we just I say just as much in, in, in life, if you don't focus on it, right. You're not, you're not going to get better yeah. at it. So, um, you know, money, everything. So, um, I'm, I'm, looking forward to uh having having a guest that we're supposed to have on tonight and come to find out we're gonna have to reschedule that for all of our viewers she uh she kind of bailed on us last minute which was disappointing (laughs) very last minute (laughs) yeah basically 20 minutes before (laughs) air i'm like i'm in here changing a shirt like hey what are we talking about yeah um disappointing but i mean yeah 20 year olds and then we have a we have a baseball episode coming up this weekend saturday yeah yeah very excited for that 10 o'clock um and we're doing we're gonna do that for a little bit yeah grab some food and uh enjoy i'll, I'll get to meet the twins in person you will so that'll be that'll the be professor and his brother <laughs> professor and marianne i'm calling him, i'm calling him marianne right then uh i have so much fun trivia do you want to you want to tease go on mike did not want to tease like I, I, I'm like I got to tell you at least one. He's like, no, no, I don't want to know anything before the episode. Do you want to tease? Is it going to be on the episode? Uh, it will for everybody else. Well, then no, I don't want it. it Suck. Yeah, because we want to be able to do this on the on the episode. Um, and then so we have, we have a, uh, another guest that I met at the Comic Con. Right, we we're hoping to get him on. Oh, yeah. Um, he. <laughs> Don't quote me on the name of his company, but it, basically he watches movies. One of the things, for example, he's like he watched all the Rambo's and then took the the leadership aspect of it, and then he creates leadership stuff and, yeah. and asks the questions. So you get to follow along movies and then do this. So <laughs> I thought that would be awesome. I met him at the end of it, type because we were busy working, and I was like, this is going to be great. So I'm hoping to have him on as a yeah. guest. Um, you know, we're we're hoping to have. I have another friend that wants to come on. He does a, a fry cart right so kind of another food truck and uh he's actually starting up a kitchen in a in a meadery down in grand rapids so i'd like to have him come on and talk about those types of things i I am going to give you a little tease all right let's hear what you got mlb's network's top player at each position oh man we're gonna we're gonna go through these not tonight we're gonna go through these though yeah and i'm not sure anybody they've chosen is anybody we would agree with (laughs) literally yeah like no that's not true there's two people we'll agree with yeah but for example their top shortstop yeah is a really good shortstop all right but i don't think he's the best shortstop in the game right now yeah gotcha so that that was the same tease i gave to mike all right um so and then you know so people are still listening to things um what uh what other episodes do you guys want what do you want us to find out i'd like to get um that tent guy back on absolutely um adam we want to revisit it adam is a definite yeah because he just launched a program because we're we yeah. still follow people um we talked a about of course yeah, yeah like a whole course we I, we talked about having jim on um to talk about because as much as i hate politics and you love it um we don't necessarily love it i just want life to be better right but we we want to have a where does the money come from for politics right yep. like when I mean, we talk about these millions of dollars going into political campaigns mm-hmm. and like what does that come so we want to dive into that yes. so and jim will be a great asset to that uh i think the professor will want to join in i think one. he will as well so um yeah that'll be uh that'll be really uh it, we're, i thought about that while at the count and i was like no nope, you know what this, yeah. is, this is the thing we need to figure out I'd, I'd like to see if Barat's interested in coming back on. Yeah, Kennedy. Yeah, that was a yeah. that was an awesome. That episode was an awesome for us. episode. We got to get with Brent again and talk some more coins. Yep. I found a a Lincoln wheat coin. Yeah. That's encased from mm. the house. Really? Which probably ain't worth shit. Yeah, two cents. But I'm going to show it to, to Brent and say, "What's this worth?" Right. Um, He's going to go. You're going to double your money, and I'm going to yeah, go. Yes. yes. Give me the two pennies, baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said I'd like I'd like to have that on. Um, you know, I, I, I want to talk more real estate stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have a buddy that's working on, uh, purchasing, um, like assisted livings and things oh, like that's that. Interesting. Yeah. Right. So I want to get into that. Um, 
you know, I say I on my flight out, I met people who own. I guess I'll say it like they own they own the company Arnie's. Yeah. Okay, and it's three generations. Yeah. So they were the first type thing, and then I and there's a bread company with Arnie's mm-hmm. as well. Um, and it's funny because she's a very modest woman, mm-hmm. and he isn't. He it's not that he's not modest. It's, she'd be like, "Yeah, we have a small little building." He's like, "It's not very small. Like it's forty thousand square feet." And I was like, "That's not a small building, right?" Like, like and, you know, it's just it was just funny, right? And we we're talking about the the one that used to be on 54th and Clyde Park yeah. and they're like yeah we're leasing the land um to uh, come and go and I was like oh I don't know shit like he goes yeah if you want a good piece of uh, real estate asset you don't sell and I was like no, I get it and you're not paying your taxes and he's like yep and I was like man I was like I'm, and, and just the quick little tips and things that I was getting from him and I was like um I couldn't get him on the podcast it was great I tried so hard I bet so I was like man this would be awesome to figure out how to go from this to what you guys have and how to, how to get there. Um, so if anybody knows anybody that uh, has started a business and then franchised it out, we'd love to have somebody on um, for that. Because I mean, yeah, you guys talk about franchising, right? So yeah, we do. Um, so I, I'd like to, I'd like to do that type of a thing. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I know one of my, I say we might actually do it here soon. I don't know what next week's plan is, but, We'll talk about because Valentine's Day is coming up. It is. Uh, I'd like to do money and marriage, right? Yeah. It'd be, you know, because you and I, it's funny because we are not what normal people in the financial world do, right? Right. Um, our, our accounts are separate in a sense. Like our wives don't necessarily care, but, you know, we teach them, but they don't. We've gotten our wives they to don't not take, overspend. They're yeah, they don't doing... take a vested interest in what's going on. Exactly, right? Um, I just tell my wife to put money in 401k and she just does it, right? So I, I'd like to, you know, put different ways out there and things yeah. like that. Um, so, you know, of course, we'll hit we'll hit an, another budgeting once we get that guest come on because yeah. they're young and trying to start out. I'd like to have Jesse back on, the millennial money witch. Yeah, I say, that'd be, a, she's, she's always fun to talk to. A so. lot of fun. Um, and I say I was down in Florida and she didn't come see me. Ain't that something? But, uh, I had, a, I had a couple of yinglings down there. Yeah. So that was fun. I did see you with a picture. Of one. Yeah. yeah. A couple. Everybody's like, took the same picture. And I was like, no, I didn't. I was like, <laughs> one's, one's aimed towards the kitchen. One's aimed towards my swim shorts. I was like, yeah, it's like, might be the same beer. doesn't mean it's the same photo. Right. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, tax times coming up you know i'd I'd like to i'd like to try to get an accountant on if we can talk about you know what what things you can do how to you know how to do those types of things you know what i want to know yeah why do we make it so difficult for taxes in this country because because we can you know in europe they don't have to go through any of this bullshit yeah oh man do we have to you should you would love this so out of respect for my wife okay so we're at the pool. We're at the pool, and there's this old guy. You know, he's he's older, and um, he's like, and he mentioned he's like the president. He goes, since him lost a bunch of money, you know, he took a bunch of money from me. And I was like, and I look at my wife, and I laugh, right? Because I'm right. like, fucking, I do a finance. I'm sitting here going, where, how, what money why? did he right? take? Like, and like, I was like, I gotta ask him. She's yeah. like, nope. And I was like. I do. I have to ask this guy. Yeah. Like, I didn't because I. You totally fucking should. I know. His answer would have been based in bullshit. Right. Like, 100%. I'd be like, because, I mean, I, I just looked at my betterment. I looked at it like nothing has gone down in the sense of things, right? Like, sure, price is going, oh, inflation, he let, whatever. You could, you could say that that is a cause of him, but that's just because you're naive. Ignor- ignorant. Ignorant. Yeah. Right. Like, um, but no, this was, was fun. Uh, I'd like to do a, an episode on timeshares. Oh yeah, that'd so, be good. Yeah, getting in them, getting out of them. Get it, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. So, um, because of course we went and did a quick timeshare tour. That gets um, you cheaper hotel for the stay. We didn't do the hotel actually. Oh, we, did? we did discount tickets and stuff okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have to because they were running a special. Right. Find that out until after. So now I feel. But it was we got a really shitty breakfast. Which is our that was our first really crappy meal. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, because normally timeshares they want to wind and dine. Oh, yeah. This was no. You know when uh, I had that stupid motorhome? Mm-hmm. So 
since we didn't get to take it to Arizona and back, we only made it, you know, just past St. Louis. Um, Don's like, well, we have this free voucher to go stay at this place. We just got to listen to their spiel. All right, fine. So we go and camping is not for me. No, I, I camp every day in my house as far as I'm concerned. Oh, you had the blue green one. Yeah. 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 So they take us in, you know, to talk about, do we want to sign up for a timeshare? This yeah. travel lodge or whatever the hell they are. Yep. I don't know, campgrounds. Campgrounds. That's what they are. Yes. <clears throat> um, so we sit down and he starts showing us stuff and he goes, what do you think? I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to take a trip in this thing again. Yeah. He goes, what do you mean? I'm like, I bought this literally to take my aunt to Arizona before yeah. she died. And she's not well enough to make the trip. So yeah, I told my wife, yeah, we'll try it. I've tried it. This is not for me. <laughs> he goes, well, and he, he pitches me for like five more minutes. Yeah. What do you think? Again, I don't think I'm ever doing this again. And he looks at me and goes, you have absolutely no interest in anything I'm going to say to you, do you? I said, nope. nope. He goes, all right, well, you got to stay in here. You got to stay here for like 10 more minutes. I'm like, all right. No. Yeah. He goes, do you want me to stay with you? I'm like, no, I don't need you. Right. Bye. I say, yeah, that was uh, on this one. Because my wife always almost gets suckered in or whatever. And she's stupid. It sounds open. great. Well, in this one, honestly, I respected the guy. Because, you know, and he comes up and he's like, Yep, we're this, and I'll show you this, and but that's my spiel. Shit, we're getting out of here quick. Yeah, I was like, hell yeah, man. Well, then we have to go on the tour, uh-huh. and then he talks to me about the money. And they're like, yeah, but you can Airbnb it. I was like, Jesus, here it goes. Right, you're in real estate, and I was like, look, this is my business. And I, I literally took time, and I was like, this is my business structure. This is how I do it. I don't deviate from this. Mm-hmm. This is this, this, this. And he's like. Yeah, you you have no interest and i was like nope and i was like you could offer it to me for three grand and i'm still not gonna buy well why and i was like because it's just not something i like i'm staying at a place i just talked to people who are paying they, they paid their yearly due their their maintenance yep. fees and their 100 bucks that you're charging them to get in and i was like i got the same one and i'm actually cheaper well yeah but that, but they're, you're not staying at the the high end blah, blah. and then so we talked to some people and we'll talk about that um Scam call, see what we can do. Yep. Hello, is it Nick? Hi, my name is Marshall, the senior Medicare advisors insurance. How are you doing today? Good, Marshall. You too? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I'm calling you to let you know that I'm with senior Medicare advisors, and based on our record, we feel that you may qualify for supplemental and Medicare Advantage plan. So, in order to qualify you, I just need to ask one quick question. Are you currently enrolled in Medicare Part A and B? Sure. Sure. How old are you? Oh, we are uh, 64. Shit. Oh. Fuck you, Marshall. Marshall. He had such bad feedback, too. Um, yeah, yeah. I say, sorry, folks. We're trying to get some fun ones, but... They don't come across very well anymore. Yeah, they don't. They don't want to play anymore with us. <laughs> say we've done it too many times. Yeah, I think we have. Um, yeah. I say, uh, yeah. So, so we have we've listed a few episodes that we want to do. Just to reiterate, I want I want to get guests uh, what they want to talk about. Um, so that way, when we come into nights where people stand us up, <laughs> we're talking about a topic they want to talk about. Right. Otherwise, we're going to talk about our life and things that piss us off. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of there at this moment. Yeah, you want to go to something that pisses me off? Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, so Jerome Powell, the uh head of the Fed, yeah, thinks that we need more interest rate heights to get inflation under control. Yeah, so let me ask you this, Nick, because you know, I'm a numbers guy. If you can tie 54% of inflation to corporate greed, what the fuck is raising the interest rates on normal people going to do? Make them broker, bingo, yeah. That's what they want. Uh, it, it literally is what they want. So we had talked about you, this. You wanted fifteen dollars an hour. Sure, you can have it, but uh, you're going to pay for it, right? Right. Well, you know, and it's funny because we talked about this on on a previous episode. You know, they're starting to come back to the uh, towns that companies own. Yeah, I, I don't remember specifically what they call them, but like Amazon's buying up places so that they can rent out. Yeah. Well, like, an apartment or a house to employees. Look at Orlando. I mean, that's what they do. Yeah. Right? I mean. Disney. Disney does it, right? People are happy to work at Disney. They are. Right. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, 
people are short-sighted when they look at this and again it's it, it's dumb people mm-hmm. uh they look at it and they're like oh my god that's great because i'll get a place for cheaper what if you lose your job yep they're not going to sit there and go well you have six months no yeah. they're going to go you have 30 days get the fuck out mm-hmm. or they'll do it like they do health insurance where it will be written in that you either lose your house the day that you're fired, the end of the month that you're fired, or you get, you know, 60 days. Right. Is that really what you would want from a job? And and that no, right? I want nothing that anybody else can control. Right. You know, so I want control over my own life. That's exactly it. So I mean, those are things that are really pissing me off. You know something else that's pissing me off? All these people that don't want to talk about wages. I didn't know there was people that didn't want to talk about wages, I guess. Companies don't want you to talk about wages. Oh, yeah, I'll say. And um, they scare you to not talk about wages. I got no fucking problem talking about wages. Yeah, me neither. I, I'm, know what I I'm open with my coworkers on what I make. Yep. If they make less than me, go tell somebody. Right. Well, if they make less than you, it's because they haven't been there as long, right? Because... Usually with our company, that's what it is. They just don't have the seniority that I do. Yep. And, you know, I, I talk to the people that have been there for God knows how long because I want to know what my potential is, right? Correct. Because, hey, if you're telling me, hey, you're only making a buck more than me and you've been here 30 more years now, thanks, man. Like, yeah. doesn't seem good to me. Um, You know, Christy's a great example because her husband worked at the same company mm-hmm. and kept getting passed over for promotions. Now, there are many reasons he gets passed over, mm-hmm. okay? And whether that's right or wrong, I'm not going to get into. Sure. But he went and had two interviews in a week and got offered two jobs that both paid more. Yeah. And basically, my company's response was, See ya. Good luck to you. Yeah, have a good day. Moments. And I mean, he's got to go make that work, which is fine. He should be able to. But again, he he's the type of person that will let his anxiety drive his life. Mm-hmm. So if he's having an anxiety issue, he can't go to work. Oh. Well, that, that doesn't work for me. Right. Like... For example, I mean, we talked about this a little bit ago. I wasn't feeling real well yesterday. And the whole time, all I was focused on was I have to make sure I can work some tomorrow, today. Yep. And I have a podcast. And I need to make sure I can do those two things. And then I can take a break on Wednesday if I need to, but I have to run the business on Thursday. There's only three of us here. We're busy. Yeah. And Dawn's not one of them. And out of the three of us, I'm the hardest worker when it comes to cleaning rooms. Right. Okay. Okay. So I have to be good enough for Thursday. And I got a baseball episode on Saturday. And I want to see my my two oldest friends, you know. Right. Which brings me to another person who is not joining us tonight, Mr. Michael Benson. Yeah. Uh, We had an anniversary last night. Oh, yeah. I seen that. Seven seven years. Yeah. Yeah, The seven year return. Yeah. Um, I said that was, it was good to see him at the con. Um, You know, him and I went to uh, Salvino's on Sunday and got a drink. Really? We did. Oh, he stay in town? He did not. His daughter had a friend invite her over, and the friend was in Plainwell. Okay. And I got a text from him hmm. while I was sleeping saying, hey, this is what's going on. Do you want to meet up, like, in Wayland or at the casino? Because I, I don't, yeah, I don't really want to just hang out in Plainwell. And I'm like, cool. So I got a hold of him when I woke up, and he's like, yeah, it just dropped her off. So we met at Salvino's and yeah, probably hung out for about two, two and a half hours and just chat the shit. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. they have their Sunday buffet. Salvinos? Yeah. I don't know. Sort right of you were at Salvinos. I didn't pay any attention. It's right behind the bar usually if they run it. I did not see it. So. Okay. I'm gonna say because sometimes they'll, they'll they used to run a, a prime rib buffet. Yeah, I did not see that. Let's say. I mean we we didn't eat, we only drank. And gotcha. we didn't I think we had like maybe four beers a piece. He actually drank. Sure. Yeah. There you go. So I think we had four beers a piece. Nice. About three hours, two and a half hours. So but yeah. maybe a little more than we should have, but you know, um, we're both good. Yeah, I say, I don't. You know, I'd like to get my niece on so that way she can, well, we can talk to her and, and figure out. I know she'd like to be on. She just needs to grow up a little bit. She's a little flaky too. Let's say that's exactly it, right? Well, you know, when we were shorthanded on Saturday, and you're like, "Call my niece in," and I'm like, mm, "No." Yeah. Let's say, yeah. I needed people that were going to come work their ass off <laughs> once I had to necessarily go behind and check. Right. No, I get it. Um, and it's just a matter of... And again, I love her, but yeah. I don't want to have to check your work. Yeah. And and especially if you're needing help, right? You yeah. Want the, you want the help. <laughs> um, yeah. I We took her on vacation and it, 
I, 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 oh, you know, I don't vacation well with others, right? It's just, no, I just don't. It's not, you know, because I try, I try so hard to relax, but I can't. And because I'm always feeling I have to entertain the other people I'm with and stuff like that. When it's like, you know, like the time, like, Hey, I'm going to go to the casino. Well, I'm not, I'm not going. I, I didn't ask, right? Like, I just want to, I'm okay with being alone. Trust me. It's completely yeah, you just fine. Want some time away. Right. Like yeah. even if, if you want to be there, awesome. We'll shoot the shit and drink beer and play cards. If you want to go like, but understand, like I'm, I'm, this is literally what I want to sit here. I don't get to do that very like I'm not mad. I'm not upset. We didn't but like we didn't go to Old Town. I tried three nights. We didn't get to like my wife's like, yeah, we can go after we drop everybody off. And I was like, it's 30 minutes back, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back again, like yeah. an hour and a half, and it's already, you know, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> like, um, we'd be there for five minutes and leave, you know. Um, and then I I I didn't get to go to Tiger Woods mini golf. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to go to, and one of them was fine. The the one really uh, was Wonderworks. We've done it plenty of times. It's a magic show and all that. Like, I'm fine without going. Mm-hmm. But it's like the three things that I kind of wanted. None of them got hit, and I was like, "All right, but we've done everything." You know, we went to. I spent five hundred and fifty bucks or whatever to from you know for my niece's birthday to go to Harry Potter Harry Potter Land, right? And I'm like, okay. And my wife's like, don't get me wrong, I had a good time, but my whole trip cost me 800 until that moment, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I spent just as much going to one park one day, and, and I could have gone and done so much other stuff. So, um, you know, and, and I, I get that feeling because when I'm going on vacation, I want to do what I want to do. Right. And luckily, I'm at that point where I don't have a lot of other people to please. Yeah. So, like, on our excursion we're doing in NASA. Don picked it. Yeah. It'll be fine. I wouldn't have picked it. Right. Um, but again, it's fine. It didn't cost really anything other than our credit. Sure. So I'll if that's something she wants to, that's fine. I'll go do that. Yeah. And then that's like that's Courtney and I are usually the same way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you want to go do it? Great. Like, let's do it. Like, hey, you want to do it? Okay, let's do it. You know, my mom, you know, she's she can't walk very well type and for very long and so like one day she just didn't go to the park right Mm -hmm. uh, the water park and i was like fine i don't give a shit like and she was fine sitting at home like cool relax sit and enjoy you know i mean to me it doesn't bother me so um but so i I was kind of disappointed i get to go to tiger woods mini golf because i really wanted to do that that's sounds like and then i drove past top golf and i was like i want to do that i love top golf it's um, it's funny because I'm talking to my wife last night and I said, you know, it's ironic to me that yours and Courtney's birthdays are both in February and next and mine are both in July. She goes, Do you know when next is? I said, Yeah, it's July ish. July twenty yeah. ish. It's the twentieth. Yeah. Is it the twenty? Yeah. I think that's yours is purely guess. Your yours is not the fourth, it's the fifth, the it's seventh. The fifth. Yeah, I say. Like, yeah. And I'm like, huh. All right. Because it's funny. I was listening to on the radio and they were talking about do you know people's birthdays and it's like I don't know anybody's birthday except for my like my family right? right um but really if you ask me my buddies and stuff like that I'm like that's what Facebook's for like uh-huh. they're telling me hey it's this person's great happy birthday man like we well, you know we kinda, the only time I'll know is if I get a you know a party invite like hey it's this for it's this 40th I know it's just fucking you know it's funny cuz uh we we kind of talked about that yesterday cuz she had me do F Mary Kill. Yeah. On you, Mike, and Mike. Nice. Which one? Let's hear it. I killed you. Really? And I married Benson. I'd probably pick the exact same. Too. <laughs> and and honestly, uh, Walling was the F because he's more yeah, girly. He's the pretty one. Yeah. He, he, I get it. He wanted to be the pretty princess one year. So, I mean, you know, oh. it was a no brainer. Don looks at me and goes, Mike would make a really good husband or wife. Yeah, like he would. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, he, you know, yeah, sure. I'll, Honestly, I'll if make... you do the same thing, I would expect you to kill me. I, I was like, I just said that. Like, I, like, looking at him, like, yep, David's gone. Like, yeah, I yeah. guess I'm have to go to the other Mike. And yeah, yeah, Benson, I mean, he'd be a good he wife. Would be, like, he would. This would be perfect for me. Um, just so we're talking about that. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, I wouldn't even know who to pick for you to do that. She goes, that's because I don't really have any friends. And I'm like, all right, well, oh, that's bullshit. Right. I, I love my wife, but she likes to play pity parties a lot. And she equates it to people don't ask me to do shit, so they're not my friend. No. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily the truth. Yeah. 
because you and I don't ask each other to do shit. We just kind of say, hey, we're going to go do this. Yeah. Because, you know, who the fuck has time in life? What? Well, Sorry, go ahead. And uh, she, she took her birthday off Facebook. Oh, really? Because her answer to me was, if they can't concern themselves with me on 364 days a year, then I don't care about the one day that they're going to concern themselves with me, which, I mean, I get that to an extent, but I don't know when people's birthdays are. I uh, yeah, no clue. I know when Mike's and Mike's are. That's it. So I, yep. I mean, and even like, with them, I know it within like two days, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, really, when I pick it, like my buddy Ron, I don't have a clue. My, I mean, I know that him and his husband are a couple days apart, which is you know, but like I couldn't tell you a month right now. Yeah. Uh, I think my buddy Steve. I think so. Actually, I do know my buddy James. Uh. And my grandpa, they're 15 and 16 of December. The, the only reason is because like that. And like, I couldn't tell you which one's which, right? Like, but um, otherwise, really, like, if you asked me, you could pick anybody. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you, right? Like, my, yep, I, I don't know. Like, my brother-in-law, you know, you know, I I know it's in August, yeah. right? I, that's about all I got for you, bud. And, uh, you know, I... I don't know. I mean, my my now brother in law and sister in law, not the foggiest clue, right? Um, my my mother in law, I know hers just because it's three days behind mine, and like, nope, she's two. Sorry, my dad's is three. <laughs> See, like that's how much I don't. But also, like, I know my dad's. You want to know how? It's the same as yours. It's the same day as the twins. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's say. Like, when you, when you when Don looks at it like that, it's hey, if you don't have time for me and blah blah, blah like we have friends who we love to hang out with, uh, you know Ray and Megan, they're great people. They don't have kids, um, and that's fine. And you know they'll hey, do you have this? And like we, this was last year. And let's call it October. Just make stupid numbers up. We looked at our phones <clears throat> and we're like, I can do the third week of December. You know, like. It was that far out that we could yeah. actually do something because they're, they're only available on the weekends because like they all work during the week and mm-hmm. this and that and stuff like that. And it's like, all right, you get this weekend and hope it works. And I think that one canceled. And I, you know, like it, that's how far in advance we're booking. Like, it's just absolutely insane. Yeah. I mean, the reason that you guys, you know, hey, is the pool? Yep. Okay, cool. Come over. Right. Then we'll hang out. But like, otherwise, <laughs> you know, we're busy, right? We have, you know, hey, you know, hey, you guys want to hang out? No, we have Emerson Gymnastics. Okay, we'll we'll come home and see you in the pool when we get there. Okay, great. Like, I, I'm, I'm fucking busy, right? Like, well, and I think she, I think part of her issue is abandonment issues, you know, the way she grew up. Yeah. And I think the other part of her issue is the fact that, you know, she understands that other people are busy, but she feels like she's the one that always asks. Which right. I get that because a lot of times I'm the one that asks. Yeah. But I don't ever take that personally. I just figure, okay, you're busy. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I remember, you know, one of my former best friends. It got to the point where I was the only one ever reaching out. Yeah. And that pissed me off. But I didn't shutter that relationship until Caitlin's graduation. Sure. Because you didn't have to come. I mean, he lives in Wisconsin. He didn't have to come for Caitlin's graduation. Send a fucking card that says, hey, I know school was a struggle. Congrats. Right. That's it. That's all I fucking needed. I didn't get that, so I haven't said a word to him since, and I won't. No. I, I got a card for his oldest kid's graduation. I threw it right in the fucking trash. <laughs> because I'm a prick like that. Yeah. And I don't mind being a prick like that. No, and that's, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, and, and you get to a point where you feel the used mm-hmm. aspect of things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, and trust me, I, you know, I have a, I used, I used, when I was younger, I used to say I have associates, right? I don't have mm-hmm. friends because that's what it is. I mean, right? Mm-hmm. I associate with you. Because, you know, I, and we tried guys weekend. It used to be me, my brother-in-law, my uncle, and our really good friend. And we did it for what well, was guys day, right? Like we did it for three years. And then of course the crap happened. So then we went three of us and I didn't even, you know, we're like, all right, nobody could just find time. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Like, I, you know, I was talking about it the other day. We, we play poker night once every couple months and we haven't done it in four fucking years. Right. <laughs> like, I just yeah, want, I haven't had a poker night in ages. Right, I just want people to come over and play poker. But I'm yeah. saying, like, I have a buddy who just reached out on Facebook. He's like, who wants to play poker? And then he's like, oh, hey, Saturday. And 
you, it's, you know, we can't make this. Oh, hey, this and this. And, and somebody's like, oh, we don't play Texas Hold'em. We play the house fun rules. And we just want to sit and play cards. And I was like, cool, so you have time, but you don't want to play. And I'm just like, I can't make this. I can't make that. And, you know, shooting. I haven't gone shooting since the under 20. Right. I say hey, you and I love to go shoot. Yep. I'm, I haven't shot with you since your diaper party. Yeah. It's insane, <laughs> it's insane isn't it? Um, that, that's 90, over seven years ago. <laughs> Cause she's seven. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, right. I I've gone shooting, I don't know, very limited, but um, so right. When you, when you talk about that and like, it's not, you know, God, we planned a trip together. Right. We but did. like say that that's granted. It wasn't planned together. It was like, Hey, we're going here. Yep. Okay. You should join. Yeah. Right. Like, let's see if we can find the time. <laughs> say, yes, I can make it happen. No, I can't. Right. Um, and even on that one right i'm just like I, i'd rather go in december january like those are warmer like that's where i want to get out of the cold right like, right the october one didn't do enough for me right. right like it didn't i wasn't in my low like technically we had really nice weather and i was like fuck there's so much i could be getting done around yeah. here you know so then your mind's at home and well and because you don't have full access to your phone you're so much more focused on what the fuck is going on yep because that was your biggest problem you couldn't detach at all oh god no like and it was and kind of, given the opportunity, like if I had lost my job right before, then it'd have been so much better. Yeah. Like looking at it now, going, ah, you know what? Because the other stuff could have waited. You had people in, you know, that could have taken care of that stuff. Yep. And and um, you know, there was three things that went wrong when I was in Florida. And Jenica's like, Are we have to go home? And I was like, a fucking shower fell apart. I don't really give a shit. Like, kid, I don't care. Like, no, you think I'm flying home for that? Yeah. Like, oh buddy, like I like my business. <laughs> you know, I like those people. I I can fix it, right? <laughs> like, hold on, let me make a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you can get somebody out there, right? Is <laughs> a, I'm not flying over that, but I mean, you get where the question comes from, though. Yeah. So it's, I mean, you know, it's not shocking that it came, but at the same time, it's like, you, our our priorities aren't as screwed up as our wives would like to believe they are, right? <laughs> right. Um, she, she said something to me the other day about the house. Because yeah. the house is cluttered. Oh, dude, mine's... Because, you know, I have a lot of stuff, Yeah. okay? And I like stuff. Yep. That She said this before. She goes, you get stuff to make yourself feel better. Fuck yeah, I do. That That's what I do. <laughs> that's exactly I want to feel better about my life because I, I don't feel very good about myself or my life right now, okay? Right. So I'm buying shit. It makes me feel better for 10 minutes. <clears throat> and she's sitting there complaining about stuff being around. Yep. So... <clears throat> One of the arguments we had at the business the other day was nobody seems to come up front to help because they don't know anything's going on because they're in the back building packages, okay? Yep. So she wanted to know if we could use the old laptop that we stopped using because it just wasn't running well. So we hooked it up on Saturday. It ran fine. Sunday, it took a crap. Mm -hmm. So she wiped and re reinstalled Windows, figuring, okay, if I wipe it down and reinstall Windows, this should make it at least work with the real link. Great. She brings it home and it's sitting on the corner of the table, like half off the table. Yep. On top of the cord, which is hanging down. Nick, I have cats. Yeah. Let's say that. Vader grabbed the cord and ran away with it. And the fucking laptop took a tumble. And guess what doesn't charge anymore? Oh. And guess how pissed I am because the fix is $150 TV. Oh, a TV? Yeah, because we could put a TV down there. Oh, gotcha. Because if I get an Android TV, android smart tv yep. i can just download the real link app and and run it right off of that yeah i don't want to spend 150 dollars. the business needs to make money this year yep and that's a useless cost as far as i'm concerned right so hmm. she doesn't figure out that he broke it until the next day she calls me and tells me yeah you're gonna have to find a different option because he busted it now i'm fucking pissed because this is the second computer he has broken because of where she lets it sit in a spot that he can fucking break it. Yeah. What's a, the, you were, you were the text when mine got broken. Yeah. And Courtney blamed me. Cause I was like, it's been sitting there for fucking months. Right. Like, I it hasn't, you know, so, I mean, she brought it home yesterday and I pulled the cover off and I'm looking at it, you know, so the casing where the cord goes yep. is broken and it's pushed in. Yep. So I'm looking at it going, I don't really want to solder it. I don't really have anything small I can shove in there. 
but I can break the rest of this part of the case off. Right. So I did. I just busted the piece of plastic off of the case. I said, it's not going to be moving. So the connection will be fine. Yeah. It'll work this way. And she's like, oh, okay. So, I mean, I made it work, but I'm still pissed off that you're complaining about my clutter, but you're putting stuff in jeopardy by where you set it, <laughs> knowing that you have a mischievous cat that likes to run off with shit. Right. So when we first, gosh, it's been years when we first got our dog, um, that's now past. That's yeah. all. But uh, I had a laptop. I missed it back when I was in college. I had a laptop, and uh, we're downstairs in the basement, and you just hear yip, beep, 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 bit the fucking cord, like bit the, and so didn't do it again. Yeah, <laughs> so, they learn quick. Yeah, it was weird how that worked. That was I was so pissed about that. I'm yeah, like, God, you know, because back then broker than broke right i mean you know, charging cords weren't five bucks or whatever no. the heck they are you know they were 100 back in the day well, so she says this to me when you know when we're talking about the laptop she goes where's the cord for this laptop i said it's upstairs at the business mm -hmm. she goes what do you mean i said exactly what i said it's upstairs at the business that way i don't have to take the cord from my laptop because it uses the same cord no back and forth to the business she goes, I don't understand. I'm like, I don't know how to make you understand. <laughs> it's upstairs to the fucking business. The cord for this one is in the living room. Yeah. For this one is in the living room. But the cord for the old one is upstairs at the business because it's the same fucking cord. That way I don't have to take it back and forth. It took me like five minutes to get her to understand what the hell I was saying. <laughs> and, and of course, me being me, I'm getting increasingly angry yeah. every time I'm explaining the it. The same thing, yes. And it reminds me... so. Caitlin, when she, you know, was first learning how to read, yeah, she would see the first letter of something and that's just what it was. <laughs> okay. So if it said car, but she thought cash, she'd just say cash. Yeah. <laughs> and she did the greatest little kid thing. You'd go, no, try it again. So she'd say the same fucking word <laughs> louder. <laughs> saying it louder is going to make it right. Yes, it does. So, of course, me being the fucking idiot I am, I'm saying the same shit to my wife. I'm just saying it louder and pissed off now yeah. because she's not understanding it's upstairs at the fucking business. So I don't have to take it back and forth between the business and the house. Oh, geez. It, it, five minutes it took her to get that. Yep. Oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> say that's what we have. I mean, we probably own more phone cords than anybody i know mm -hmm. and we still have none yeah <laughs> like, oh, yeah charging cords you can never find the right one yeah so because she's like hey can i borrow your car charger and i go to get in my car today and i was like well my car charger's gone and she goes oh yeah it's at home inside and i was like thanks for bringing it inside and not putting yeah. it back where the fuck you found it exactly like, that's cool like <laughs> but yeah but I mean, last summer yeah this was here because we were podcasting a decent amount yeah and I needed it at home and I wasn't coming into the business. And I, I told her for like four straight days, Hey, can you bring my laptop home? <laughs> and she didn't bring it home any of those days. And it literally started world war three because she's like, well, you, when you ask me to do something, I do it. I'm like, really? Because really? for four straight fucking days, I said, bring my laptop home and the motherfucker still sitting upstairs at work. Yep. Um, so anyway, I, you know, I know we got off quick tangent, which is what we do, but you had mentioned, you had mentioned, yeah. um, Corporate greed being yeah. being a thing. So, you sent me a video. I did of a guy. NBC just came out with it. C CNN, something like that. Some, yeah, I think it was CNN. Or it's CNBC. Sure. All right. Sixty-five percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Yes. Right. Um, that's fucking gross. Yeah. I mean, um, you also sent me one. You want to you want to have a fight? It'd be fun for me. Oh, I knew you were going to fight about this one. Um, it was a guy who who said that uh housing you know, a, a house is uh a basic necessity basic human right basic human right there you go yeah and i was like ha huh. go on <laughs> say um he said some things i agreed with yes and then he turned around and said some things i definitely did not fucking agree with yeah and i was like buddy you you got so much to learn and so you know because we just talked about it so um okay so Newaga, we talked about mm -hmm. that earlier in this episode. New is an hour north of Grand Rapids. Yes. Okay. Do you listen to GRD? From time to time. Okay. So there's actually two that I know of for sure. Um, DJs or you know, talk show people or whatever that live that way, if yeah. not if not a little farther. So um, and then they drive it. So 
all I'm saying is, is right. Affordable housing is, you know, we, we had guests on, they bought a house in building on the water for 220. You try to buy water here in Grand Rapids. Um, um, you're going to pay four fifty, Yeah. Or more. Right. Like the like bare minimum. Right. I mean, depending on what water, you know, if you try to go to Lake Michigan, you're, you're millions, right? If you try to go to the river, you can't really swim in the river. So it's not, it's not fun water, right? right. <laughs> Nobody's doing So again, you know, you can find housing. You just have to travel for it. Right. I mean, my, my point always is that Baldwin one, right. Where they're offering first month free, no security deposit, <laughs> granted, which is why it's for sale and nobody's, but you could go there. Right. And you're living for, I think it was 480 bucks a month. Like, yeah, you have to commute in, but we're not paying people commute money. No, you you are like you're you just you turned your twelve hundred dollar a month housing into five hundred dollars a month of housing. So now you have seven hundred bucks that you can. Yeah, what if my car breaks down? Well, I mean, I understand that, but like now you have seven hundred bucks to, to make this. Yeah, but I'm paying gas. Like, no, like you're trying to fix everything all at once. Let's fix one thing at a time, right? Like there are options out there. People just don't necessarily like the options. Mm-hmm. Now, will I say that rent's out of control in the Grand Rapids area? Absolutely, it's out of control. That's it. And again, you're still one of the cheapest people around. Yeah, and 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 housing an apartment, or you know, so a house in an apartment is way different. So I, you know, a girl reach out or whatever, and she she posted online. She's like, "Hey, I'm looking for a private landlord," and I always ask why because I'm always intrigued, yeah. right? And I will say, I don't know the percentages, but I will say most of them are because they have felonies or evictions, mm-hmm. which is shit I don't deal with, right? So you're just trying to push that. But like this person, and I'll just pull it up. Um, sorry, this person had said, um, and, I, and, and here's where I think their expectation is wrong. And, oh, did I send you guys that screenshot? Um, of course, now I can't go back. Here we go. Uh, sorry to bother my... So I said, when, how many beds, how many bath, budget, why a private landlord? As soon as possible, which is always a warning sign. Yep. Um, at least two beds, roughly a thousand a month. Also through also through private landlord is way easier communication, sometimes better deals with money. And all around people I know have told me it's much better. So I'm like, that's a good reason, right? Yeah. Like, um, to me, it's a good reason. It's not they're hiding you know they're not trying to hide but like and she said it's usually cheaper money right because corporations run for the money they do we run for to get you know I mean, most you're you're running for money but you're not running for all of it right all at once of, yeah you're not sitting there going i'm gonna get rich off of you now right um and you know it's say a thousand right and i think to get a two-bedroom house like you, you're just no it's not gonna happen i mean you can get an apartment for that yeah of course right and like that's why I'm like, I'm not like my houses. I got to stop renting them for cheap because there are value in those things. There are. And you know, the one I'm working on is three bedroom, one, two, one and a half bath. Right. I'm hoping to get 1800 for it. Like, yeah. um, you know, let's say I, I should get more. I should get, you know, two grand or whatever, but like, I'll try to take like 18, you know, I mean, I'm still going to be low. So, and, and it's a full house with a fenced in backyard. It's got a garage. Like there's so many amenity aspects of the thing. So, um, you know, knowing, you know, my last one, I should be getting anywhere from 18 to 24. I didn't really. And then I ended up taking 1450. But, um, you know, so that just tells you like how I'm failing myself. Right. Well, and again, I mean, we, we have this conversation a lot. So, you know, you, you listen to renters and they're like, all landlords suck. All they are is out to screw you and they only want money and, and whatever. Yep. Uh, Nick, do all um, rentees suck? Yes. But you know that's not true. Right. I mean, you've told me before about some great people you've had in your places. Yeah. You were talking at the con about Charlie Chip's guy. Yeah. You loved having him as a, a renter. He absolutely did. Um, <clears throat> right. I mean, he had his little faults, but like really it was it was a false positive for what he gave me. You know? Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I say he was never home, we were never home. <laughs> we just happened to pay for the building. Right. right. So um you know, it was it was great to have have that. Um, I, you know, I've, I I do you know, and I'll give him a shout out. I guess my so when I right, when I was on vacation, my Granville house got shot. Yeah, with a gun, um, three bullets. It broke one of the windows, and I he they had told me, and I was like, what the hell? And I was like, are you guys okay? Right. Um, and 
I posted, hey, I'm looking for a window person. I'm out of town, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, quickly my friends were like, yep, here's yep. a person. And then my father-in-law was like, if you're talking about mine, I was planning to get it done at my work. And I was like, holy shit, they're going to take care of it. Like, yeah. awesome. Whole, like, so I give them credit. Like, they're taking care of it. They're not, you know, they're not. And I was like, thanks. That's great. <laughs> like, you know, I bet when I get over there, the two spots on the drywall still have holes in it. But can't can't win them all. Right. So, <laughs> but, you know, I was like, I was like really impressed that they're actually mm-hmm. taking care of it. So, um it's not that you know i have to it's i mean the and that's the other thing is like an agreement's kind of an agreement to me right like i told him it's, you, you're renting the house for dirt cheap like you're taking care of everything yeah. right i'm i'm not selling you the house because in the end i'm going to get it for my inheritance anyway <laughs> right like and it's mine like um you can just live here for you know a little above cost and because you know I'm going to have to put a roof on it. I'm going to have to, you know, yeah. do the, I, I put a water heater in it. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to do all the stuff, the main expensive stuff. So, um, you know, so it just, and, and people be like, well, that's the landlord's thing. They have to fix it. The gun. No, like, right. Like this is the agreement we had. Like I, I had another window and I didn't charge the tenant and I should have. Right. And I, I had two choices, um, charge or not. And, um, <clears throat> her husband apparently got in with the wrong crowd aspect of things. Well, People tried breaking into my place. They broke my fucking window, like destroyed it. There's blood all over everything. Um, people were like, oh, well, that's no, like the tenant brought the bad person there. Like, and she said it. If she never told me, she said, I don't know who it is. Like, okay. I mean, who's, whose responsibility does that fall on? Right. Like, right. okay. Yeah. Well, you know, accidents happen, things like, and people are, you know, the thing that pisses me off is the answer. Like, let's say, let's say the window got shot. Let's go back to that. Right. People are constantly, like, yeah, that's what insurance is for. You really like granted Are you gonna I turn that into insurance. I choose to have a five thousand dollar deductible. Right. Okay. I could have a thousand dollar deductible. But you really think I'm gonna pay a thousand dollar deductible for a three to five hundred dollar window? Well, that's just it. Like, no. <laughs> Say uh, you know, it's just uh, it, frustrations in that aspect of things. Right. The way people think. People it, don't understand how insurance works. I swear to God. And I, we had a water leak because the people that owned the house before us had the fucking roof put on backwards. No. So it was leaking in. So, you know, we have a, a peak that comes into another area. Nope. So they had, instead of building it, you know, that this one runs this way and this one then runs over top of it. So all the water runs off the roof. Yep. They put it the other way. They put it the other way. So the water ran in the crack. Yep. It happened to, when I got a new roof on that happened to my back porch. Yeah. And it ran just fucking pouring. And I was yeah. like, oh, we're going to go ahead and fix that real quick. So. I had Steve come look at it, and he goes, we can absolutely fix it. He goes, but I don't know if insurance is going to be the way to go. Have him come out and look at it. Yep. I'm like, cool. So I had him come out and look at it. I told him, Steve, what they're going to give us. And he goes, yep, we can get it done for way less than that. You're going to make out good on this one. I'm like, cool. There you go. Yeah. So they cut me the check. That they, you know, were going to cut me, and Steve took, you know, way less than he probably should have to fix it. And yeah. I was a happy guy because I made a little bit of money on it. Yep. Now, I have a $500 deductible. And it was like, I want to say four thousand in damage. Sure. And I think he fixed everything for two thousand twenty five hundred, maybe. Yeah. So my when I bought my first house, I mean, the week that we bought it, we had a big windstorm and it took off siding. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I had a guy come out and he's like, "No, we're gonna get all new siding in the whole house because they have to match everything because otherwise it look dumb." And the insurance company is like, "No, you only get to replace this." And it was just a big headache or whatever. So anyway, they. They gave me a chunk to replace their stuff. And of course I had my contractor end up doing it. Um, I recited my entire house. I built railings. I did interior work. Like I spent all the money on fixing up my house. Cause, and I got so much more than what they were willing to offer. I redid the whole entire house. Yeah. Side. And, and so it's just a matter of finding the right people. Yeah. So, um, but, um, you know, I so anyway, back to back to the whole sixty-five percent of people yeah. living paycheck to paycheck. Um and, and the guy saying that uh, a house is a basic life necessity or whatever the hell he called it. Basic human right. Basic human right. You don't have the you have the right to purchase. You have you have the right to buy. You don't have the right to just get one. Right. And and when you say it's a basic a human right is it's completely different than 
a want, right? Like, I mean, that that's the way I look at it. I mean, well, and I, I think where he's going is what this is. Everybody should have access to affordable housing. Yeah. My question is, what does that look like? What is affordable, right? And, well, not only what is affordable, what does affordable housing look like? Maybe right. it's something different than what we currently have right now. Well, and, and we talk about it, right? And I'm very, yeah. I'm, I try to be very clear on this. Okay. So let's say, let's say, um, and how many, and the problem is too many shitty people. And, mm-hmm. and I don't know. How to, okay. So let's say you and you and your wife are not married. Yeah. Okay. And or you're dating right back in the day. So she has a house or, you know, she's renting a place mm-hmm. and then you move in. I mean, should you rent double because now you have double the income? I mean, theoretically it doesn't. Maybe like, I mean, honestly, it does not even theoretically. Theoretically, maybe should it? It should, right? So, like, but now, how many people are going to lie, and nobody's ever going to end up? You well, know? that's just it. So, like, I mean, <clears throat> if you want it to be a fair thing, cool. Affordable housing. Yep, you could now. Now you have a kid. Well, I shouldn't have to pay because I had a kid. It shouldn't be a, a thing. Well, now I'm I mean, in the landlord world. Like, you're using more water. You're using stuff. Like, <clears throat> when we had a kid, we turned the heat up in our house. Trust me, you oh, know, yeah. like. If you I have to, if I have a boiler system, I'm paying for more of this. Like, um, so all I'm saying is, is, you know, what, what, what does it look like? Right. So are we singling out the single people? Are we making it, are we making everybody that has two incomes be amazing? Like somebody fills out a, a rental form for you, yep. an application. Yep. How much do they have to make over rent? Three times the amount of rent for income. Okay. So basically, and and that so that's the standard generic answer. Uh huh. Which equates, me me on the other hand, it all there's so many different factors, right? So if so you basically if you go to a single family house uh-huh. where you're paying for everything, three times the amount of rent for income, yeah. okay? Um, because you are covering water, you're covering all the utilities. Yeah. If you go into one of my units, I, I go a little less. Uh, like 2.7 2.8 type because i'm covering heat Mm -hmm. and you have to cover electric and then i'm covering water so it's like you know like because i i notice that you're not paying those bills and so i you know i don't need you to cover those bills kind of a thing if that makes any sense yeah so basically everybody's been told 30 percent of your take home yep should go to your housing yep but what are the actual numbers we're at right now I would venture to say it's closer to 50 to 55%. If you're a single person. I would say even if you're a family. Really? Yeah, I would. Well, so we figured it out, right? I mean. Um, Here we both go to the phone. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, average household income for Michigan. Household 45 to 64. So I guess that's not really fair. And then 65 and older actually goes down. Um, I need to go two more rows. Sorry. So, all right. So, right. Let's just call it the basic 25 to 44 year olds, right? Because that's what it says. Okay. So $70,000 for household income. And and I'm rounding down. Just to let you guys know, it's $70,251 here in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um. And we'll go 70,000. Now we take that 70,000, <clears throat> divide it by 52 weeks, right? Is $1,346. $1,346. So, <clears throat> and what do you think? Well, let's find out what average rent and, well, the problem is that's through all of Michigan. So I don't know if yeah. we find Grand Rapids. I mean, um, yeah, because there are some places that are incredibly cheap. Right. Oh, there is there one out here? Average rent in Grand Rapids. And this is old, so that's not helpful. All right. Rental market trends. According to rent.com, is between 1095 and 1400 So if we take the middle of that, let's call it 1250 Yeah. Right? So, and that, that's just a real quick. Um, 
So I, I, I'm not seeing 50%, I guess, at that point. So, because I love numbers. Yep. Average cost of housing in 2021 mm -hmm. rose 5.6%. Yep. 22624 dollars a year. Okay. Which equates to just under nineteen thousand a month. No. Yeah. Twenty two thousand, nineteen hundred a month. Nineteen hundred a month. Yeah, Did go. I say nineteen thousand? Yeah. Nineteen hundred. I was like, no. Nineteen hundred a month. <laughs> Whereas the ama average American household spends an average of sixty one thousand three hundred thirty five dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people are that's over that's that's around twenty two percent, I'd say. But still, I mean, so twenty five percent of your income, and that's but that's how I we help. Twenty two. I said th I meant thirty two. Thirty two. So, I mean, that's that's close. That's fine, right? But like, we tell people to spend. I mean, okay. So the banks allow you to get thirty three, right? And like everything goes to this number, and if, you know, I personally tell people twenty five percent, right? Like twenty, because it'll it will change your life. You just don't know it, right? <laughs> like, you know, if you're doing twenty five percent, and and you can go because chances are if you find if you have to go find a different job, it's going to be in that thirty seven percent. It's going to be in that same realm, right? <clears throat> um, so, you know, and I think that's just because people people are given the ability, right? I mean, I think Americans are stupid. I like, would agree, right? Like, David, have you ever bought a BMW at eight hundred dollars and fifty bucks a month for a payment? No. Okay, I mean. I, the amount of BMW owners. Ask me the highest car cost I've ever had. What's the highest car payment you've ever had? I think when I bought the first vehicle I bought for my wife, it was around three fifty a month, and that was insane. See, that's crazy to me. It was crazy to me, really? but I was young and stupid with money. Well, like my okay, when we had when we had a car payment or whatever, right? We went and I'm not afraid to admit it, I've had a car payment. It was two hundred bucks. I think it might have been two hundred two. Cause like I was pissed because it was above the 200, but I was like, whatever, it's two bucks. Right. Um, like I, you know, I, again, and sure. I had a little higher mileage than I originally wanted. I had, but like I settled, I chose that. Right. Like, because those are the things that I, like, I'd rather be comfortable, you know, at the time, you know, my house payment was 650, but you can't get a six. I literally just went and almost paid cash for a house, right? Yeah. Like for, and if you 30 year it out, it wouldn't be that price, right? Like, so people tell me, people tell me, you can't find these deals. I literally just fucking did. <clears throat> like the difference is they don't want those. Deals. Exactly. Right. They like, want, they don't want a six year old car with 120,000 miles on it. Right. They want a two year old car with 20,000 miles on it. Yep. So my Equinox downstairs, Yep. I bought it. It was a 2013. I bought it in the beginning of 2016. It had 19,000 miles. Yep. My payments were 2.99 a month. Yeah. And that's a scene like to me that's just, you know, it's just crazy. <laughs> like um I'm okay with car payments if they're less than 300. Yeah, and that and like that's but that's you've budgeted and you've yep. thought about it. That's what paid. I look at and I I'm like I'm okay at that. Yep. And like, Yost just bought a new truck cuz his his fourth engine died. Yeah. And his truck payment's like 500 bucks a month. Which is really cheap for a truck. No fucking way in hell. No, but I mean, uh, you know, I I I look at it. But uh, if if Americans have extra money to spend, <clears throat> they will spend it on depreciating assets. Yes. It's, and I don't want to say that in like the fact that I'm picking on people. Because like really, people, yeah, but why can't I have a nicer car? Well, you want a fucking nice house and you want a nice car? Like, well, it took me, I, I don't... Do you think my car's nice? I mean, it's nice looking from the outside. I, mean, I haven't been inside it in a while. It's fucking trash. But, like, dude, my bumper is half falling off right now. The rear is bent. Like, I, I love the color. Me too. But, like, all I'm saying, I, I drive a 2010. Yeah. Have, what do you think about my truck? Oh, yeah, it's a piece of shit. Right. Like, but it, but it runs. It drives. It goes from A to B. How like, much you pay a month for that truck? Zero dollars. Well, insurance. but, but I Right. But right, you're, like, you're, nothing. More, you're your mortgage. You're... Car payment is nothing. Right. Right. My car, nothing. My wife's vehicle, nothing. Well, like, you know, my Bluetooth going out in the Equinox. Yeah. People are like, well, do you want to get a new car? No, it's been paid off for one fucking year. It's got 120,000 miles on it. Right. It'll last you. I'm not going to sit there and throw 1200 bucks into it for a new fucking radio. That's right. bullshit. Yeah. I'll just live with it. <laughs> Say I can, I can put speakerphone on. Right. And that's, but like, that's the thing is like, people want all that type of stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, man, like I get you want it, but. 
save up for it and do it right. Do it, do it the financially smart way yeah. because you know, everybody, everybody looks at, you know, Oh, you, all you care about is money. No, not at all. That's not true. Like I just went on vacation. Mm-hmm. Right. And <clears throat> yeah. And I bitched about going to a $550 park when I also went to Aquatica and SeaWorld and those cost me, you know, 35 bucks a piece. Like, right. I went during the off time. <clears throat> I did this random stuff. Like, um, you know, my flights were $89. My hotel originally was 540. Like I was $800 into a trip for my family. Like seven days, we could have had a great blast, right? Like, and then technically added two parks and I would have been at a thousand bucks. So yeah. seven days, like I, six nights, I, and then we ended up spending more and, and, you know, food and stuff like that. Cause we went to a Brazilian steakhouse. I'm not gonna lie about that. We went to, in, in, in the one park, um, Adventure Island, mm-hmm. uh, Universal, mm-hmm. <clears throat> there's it's not a world renowned it's uh the nation's best food place amusement park and actually the food inside was really good like it was michelin uh not not starred but it was a back type thing you know like they're like hey yeah you should have it but you're not you know so like it was and yeah okay it was 20 some bucks a plate right like but it was it was good like i'm fine with that right like um where you know i could have bought a 14 dollar hot dog you know i was like i'll pay the extra money to have a nice little thing um well you know one of the things you were talking about at the con was you know talking about these things that people collect like me yeah and you know if you can look at the fact that they'll appreciate or depreciate in price and one guy goes everything i've ever collected has gone down in price well you're collecting the wrong shit then dude well that's exactly it he's you know he was in the nascar stuff yeah sure in the 90s right you can get rid of your i mean my dad did the rep my dad sold the right time that's all it was Mm -hmm. and uh you know but he's like yeah my taylor and her autograph thing's only worth eight bucks it was up to 160 bucks and i was like 160 you should have sold but you thought you were on a gold mine and you held out and like i'm not saying what you did was wrong i'm not saying what you did was right but like that that's how trends go that's how things happen like you know and uh but you know, so given the opportunity, I mean, car cars just happens to be the easiest thing to pick on because people will overspend like crazy. Yeah, yeah but car prices they're so high and everybody needs a car. Yeah, I get that, right? But like you can go buy let, let me ask you this. I our mass transit here is shit. Yeah. But let's say you lived in Chicago. Yep. Would you own a car? Yeah. I wouldn't. Well, I'm different than you. I, I wouldn't own a car. Right. If I needed a car, I'd just go rent one. Well, that's what I so I just use the CTA. Right. And I, I say renting a car. Yeah. Like now it's a different thing. But like I told my niece, I was like, look, if you don't want to get your license, it's fine. Go live in Chicago, go live in New York. Right. Yeah. Because you don't Some need Someplace you don't have to have a car. Right. 100%. But me being the person, like I feel like because I'm raised here and like because my car, I mean, it just feels so trapped not having one. I don't love riding with others. Yep. Like, you know, I, I get it. You know, it's just, I want my vehicle. Um, and so, but yeah, you know, given had I been, I mean, my friends, I, I know so many people without cars, right? Well, you know, look at Homer, right? And he was on a pedal bike forever. Yeah. And, and he took the bus in Grand Rapids, right? To me, it's the opportunity to go see the world. Right. So, um, and as you said, you like, I, my buddy from New York, he made two and a half million bucks a year didn't have a fucking vehicle went to texas and now they have two of them yeah and you know sure he he's making he makes good money made good money whatever and i was like man you can just go get a a toyota corolla or whatever he's like yeah my my wife got an escalade and he got a uh, not a fucking porsche but he got like an audi a8 or something right like and i'm like dude that's the whole thing like expensive vehicles exactly right like you and and he doesn't need the money. I, you know, I don't, I don't know his whole life financial setup of things, but like you, you could just buy a $30,000 vehicle, you know, like you 20,000 miles on it. It's going to last you forever. It's going to have a great warranty, like this type of stuff. Yeah. Like I just go do those types of things, but nope. I mean, people, people want that. Yeah. But I have to have a, I have to have this. No, you don't like, you have smart. to look at what you have to have. Yep. Don gets pissed. Cause you know, a new Funko will come out and I'm like, Ooh, gotta get that one. Gotta get it. No, I don't have to do anything, right. but I want to get there. Mm-hmm. And if I have the ability to do it, I'm just going to go do it. Yep. She gets pissed because we can't buy presents for each other because we're old fucks. Right. And you, if I want something and I see it, I'm buying it. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, and then, you know, I don't know. I, my niece didn't tell me how much she has, but I will tell you that she doesn't have enough money saved up. I'll tell you that, right? Oh, like, I believe it. 
because you know oh well that, that's you know and then she told me cause she worked at the other job or whatever she's like yeah but because inventory I, you know i got bigger check or whatever and i'll have more money leaving here than what i had and i was like jesus crime like i thought you said you've been saving for getting out and i thought you've been saving for this and i thought you've been what the shit like that's why like i don't know she's not she's not automating anything she's not doing it. like you know and that, that's where it pisses me off so um no i totally get that because i'm sitting here going hey help yourself help yourself mm-hmm. like and she's not like and, and that's that's where it bothers very me. much an 18 year old she's 19 now she just had very her much an 18 year old <laughs> yeah but you know and and you, you want to bitch about how you want a house and you want to bitch about how this should be affordable and stuff like that but like again if we break down her life so she has two part-time jobs, which is fine. I don't care what you're doing, but like you're telling me that I should be able to afford to live by my own. But I mean, in theory, I don't know her, but like we could lay it all. I mean, Caitlin's a little older now, but like she works one job, doesn't make that much money and lives on her own condo. Right. Yeah. Like my niece, she's been working now for a year out of school has i don't know i'd say less than a thousand bucks she's the average american less than a thousand bucks in your bank account and i'm like okay so let's say on average you're getting 200 dollars a week i told you to put half of it away like you live at home with no rent like stop so not to bag on and she also eats fucking the most expensive thing every time she goes out every time um but not not to bag on her or anything but she wanted a session here with her friend yeah now if you come in at an off time and you're an employee yeah don will give you your first session free okay she wanted it on a fucking Saturday. Sure. So she paid. Yeah. Now Dawn threw her, you know, a small printer for free. Sure. But she told her, listen, we're busy that day. We're going to sell that spot. So you're paying for it. Yeah. Which is fine. You know, and we have people, people will cancel. Like, day. we have a zero cancellation policy. If you want to rebook, we can rebook. Sure. But within 24 hours, you're fucking shit out of luck. Right. So somebody calls the other day and they're like, well, I'm not going to make my appointment in two hours. And Dawn's like, that's fine. We can issue a gift card for minus $20 of what you spent. Why do I have to pay $20? Just I could have sold that spot. Because that spot would have been taken by somebody else, and now you're not here, and I can't sell that spot because it's too late. Right. Well, I don't like that. I don't technically have to do anything. Right. Your time is in two hours. We'll see you then. Oh, I don't like that either. Okay, then deal with the 20 bucks. Right. I'm just saying, and that's, I don't know, you know, like, we we you have to know that going in right like i mean again the... don't you want to be educated on shit you're gonna do yeah did you know what things were gonna cost when you went like not necessarily food and shit but did you know what the parks were gonna cost um the park the the, the universal no i had no fucking clue well okay. I, I did because i looked it up but well that's what i mean you looked yeah. it up yeah so you had a ballpark idea yes of what you were gonna spend yep and did you have sticker shock yes why because i went to the other parks and like and paid way less right well i didn't have sticker shock i i, I knew it. i just hated paying it right so like i can't right. say it's sticker so, so you so like you knew it but and we, you didn't like it right we went to a brazilian steakhouse right so let's give that as an example like going into it like i'm like all right i know that it's 40 bucks a piece and then i called around and I, we found the place for like 27 for lunch or whatever right and i was like cool um and my niece is like oh man and i was like didn't ask you to pay like just go and enjoy yourself right um but like you know i i'm i look into everything as nope. much as possible right like so do i because i don't want to be blindsided by something like if i would have walked into the park and they were like 500 bucks to get into universal i'd have been like nope but like going like we made an educated decision because yep. we talked about it the night before we're like okay she wants to go it's her birthday should we do it like do we have the money yes do we want to spend the money no no but my wife said yes. And again, our vacation account is meant for that. Yeah. If we have it, we're we're allowed to spend it. If that's what you want to do, we'll do it. Right. I spent it's fucked up, right? Like give the opportunity. I went to a Kansas City Rose game, paid for everybody's ticket. Yep. Stuff like that with like her family. And it was the same price as what I paid for to go to this theme park. I would choose a fucking Royals game all day, every day. Even though I had a good time. Like, I'm just like, yeah. You know. Mike and I were sitting there on Sunday talking about, you know the future when we you yeah. know, look to retire yeah and he's like you know it may turn into a point where i say hey i'm gonna live in half of your house down in Plainwell. 
I'm like, great, because that's going to be, you know, probably my house from Monday through Thursday out of the week. Right. Because I plan on a hot tub and an indoor pool because I want to do what I want to do. Right. And hell, if he's in it, then I don't have to worry about being there all the time because somebody's there taking care of the place. Yep. And I, I said, I mean, you know, when we look at things, you know, him and I are talking about retirement, but we're not talking about stopping working. Right. We want to do, again, we want to do what we want to do. I said, I want the ability to say, hey, Mike, you want to take three weeks and go from Fenway to Miami? Yeah. He goes, man, we could do Fenway, both New York ballparks, Philadelphia, uh, the Nationals, Nationals yep. uh, Camden. Baltimore. Baltimore. Uh, well, Camden, yeah. Yep. Um, he goes, and Miami, that's great, but we could also hit like Tampa Bay and Atlanta on the way back. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm looking at longer term and things I would like to do. I love ballparks. Yeah. Like, you ever go to a pro football game? Yeah. You have. Yeah. They're fine. All right. I think it's better on TV. Yeah. Because you can see more of it. Right. And it's not like football stadiums have that much character. No. Every football stadium is basically the same because the field is the same. Right. Whereas every baseball park is different. Completely. And the, I mean, you get to see so much more. Yeah. Yeah. I always like the old parks, like the polo grounds with that cutout in center field. I yep. love, I love Tiger Stadium, the 440 to dead center field. Say, save that. We're going to save it for the basement okay. episode. <laughs> um, we're already getting excited about it. Yeah. But, no. Um, yeah. I say, I, you know, I, I pre plan. And that's the thing is, again, we didn't do the things I wanted to because, again, <clears throat> my wife doesn't love to pre plan things, but. I also missed out on a lot of things because we didn't pre-plan things, yes. right? Be, and that, and that, that, it only hurt me. And, you know, again, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal because I'm talking about it, but it's really not. I don't really care. I'll go next year and I'll just make it a priority and be like, hey, I'm going to this, right? So, Come or don't. Right, you know? Um, and, uh, no, I, you know, so I, I say sticker shock, yes and no. But, again, my, we, we'll talk about, I talked about that in the, vacation episode best thing my wife and i ever did and uh, it's funny because the thing popped up in my memories so I, I made a big post about it i was like I can say it saved my marriage in the sense of like we used to fight about like because i i would never go to universal you know given the opportunity like mm -hmm. i can go to sea world for 30 bucks and do <clears> that right um so if we have it we get to spend it it's in the vacation account we diligently both work to fund that vacation account we do the right things and, and that's what it's all about to us mm -hmm. is and yeah get, i mean you know now saying it like my wife my wife goes do you regret going and i was like kind of because i didn't get my 500 dollars of enjoyment out of right. it right but like I, it would have been different i guess my so my kid's 48 inches and we thought you, she could ride everything you have to be 52 to ride the big coasters yeah. And she just wanted to ride them so bad. And like, I always wanted to ride those things, man. But, and Harry Potter was smaller than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, which was, you know, I guess I, I just thought it was going to be, because it should be a massive draw. And I, I get that they're building it for 10 years from now and there'll be something else coming. Yeah. But, um, and we didn't do the two park hopper thing. So we didn't, you know, the other one has the same size. So yeah. if they had both of them in one park, I, I'd probably be happier, but um you know, I don't know. It's it just, you know, the the difference of what my age is and what I can do currently and stuff like that. So, well, I mean, the parks have gotten extremely expensive, right? Because Disney's got awful. Yeah, 150 bucks a ticket. <laughs> well, you know, I, I appreciate Vanessa going, I love Disney. I want to go to Disney. I went to Disney the last time in 2001 and then we went last year. Last year, yeah. And uh, I'll go back to Disney at some point. Yeah. But it'll probably be 15 years. Yeah. Well, because I mean, do you regret going to no to spending the money on it or anything? No. So you had a good time. I mean, yeah, we had a good time. I mean, yeah. I really wanted to go to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. So I got to do what I wanted to do. Dawn really wanted to go to Wild Kingdom or whatever they call it. Magic Kingdom, yep. Uh, no. Animal Kingdom. The Animal Kingdom. Yep, place. sorry. And uh I really enjoyed it there. I, I did. I we love animals. So yeah. I mean, anytime we can be around animals, we're happy. So I mean, you know, I, I don't regret it for a minute. Yep. Um do I feel like we got our money's worth? Probably not. Right. Because we spent a lot of money to go to these places. And was it worth it for that? I don't know. I don't really ride rides. You know what I mean? Right. Like we rode a few. We did the Millennium Falcon, which was fun. 
Yep. Um, we did Rise of the Resistance, which was fun. Uh, I think we did one more ride at Hollywood Studios. That was it. Sure. All I was there for was Galaxy's Edge. I didn't care about cars. I didn't care about Toy Story, any of the other shit they had. Sure. And I asked Dawn and Caitlin, and they were both like, yeah, we don't really care about doing any of those. Cool. Yeah. Spent the whole time at Star Wars. Oh, there you go. Well, seeing like, I don't know. I, that's, we went to the one that we went to because I don't know why, but we had the choice of the two. And I was like, well, this other one has minions and it has the other stuff. And I was like, I'd rather go to that one. <clears throat> they both have the Harry Potter thing mm-hmm. or whatever. So, um, but, you know, I say my, my niece liked it. She had a good time. She, we had butter beers, which was mm-hmm. a fun experience, things to do. And I think getting into there, cause there's this one place in there. Yeah. Of, toys and trinkets and fun but there was nothing of fun inside of it it was just candy and i was pissed about it because i was like i want magic i want like i love right i love being entertained and i want to be entertained on a constant basis so i rode i rode five rides there it was you know they had big boy rides which is fun i uh i saw a tiktok that reminded me of you yeah speaking of that i should go tiktok live we should i don't think it was a tiktok actually i think it was something that deja shared hmm um not to buy kids toys yeah because kids have a shit ton of toys that play with them for 10 minutes and they never play with that toy again yep i'm like boy this reminds me of nick and then it talked about you want to do something special with my kid take him somewhere yeah because that's the stuff they'll remember take him to dinner or take him to a movie or go do something with them yep and i'm like boy that that's really good yeah that's i mean that's like i we did buy right she she has if I had to pick, like, we've probably, now she's seven, we've probably bought her seven toys. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, if I had to put a number on it, like, literally, everything, if you come to my house, everything else comes from mm-hmm. other, other people. people, right? Don't get me wrong, I got two free, I got a Disney, or the uh, Barbie Dream House and, like, a Monster High Dream House. Like, mm-hmm. they're huge fucking items, Like right? She doesn't play with them. They, I got them for free. They sit in my base. But, like, everything comes from other people. Mm-hmm. Like, gifts and all. Like, we give our daughter experiences beyond belief. <laughs> so. That's what she's going to remember. It really is. That's exactly it, right? <laughs> like, I remember some of my toys, but yeah. not all of them. Right. I mean, it's funny because we had the toy museum. Or we had mm-hmm. the. And I'm, like, looking at it. I was like, that was at my grandma's. That was at, And, like, mm-hmm. I'm looking and going, yeah, I had a slinky. I mean, <laughs> but really everything else is like, yeah, I don't know. These, yeah, these are my toys. But they were also my aunts and uncles toys <laughs> so when, but, when when you look at going back to the collectible thing yeah. when you look at the collectibles if you're buying stuff strictly to make money yeah that's as big of a gamble as putting it in the market it's exactly. probably a bigger gamble. worse you say it's a worse gamble if you ask me i mean you had said to somebody you know if you have somebody autograph a picture if they autograph it to you it's not worth as much as if they just autograph it yep and that's absolutely true now i I love sports. Okay. I love the bears. I love the cubs. I have random cubs and bears autographs from people that they're not worth much, right? but they're worth everything to you. Yeah. The players were important to me. Yep. And I sit there and I look at it and go, man, I love that guy. Yeah. It's a, you throw you know, Tim Biakabatuka. Right? Yeah. Played half a season, right? Like it was my brother and I's like favorite player. I have an autograph. It's worth $0, zero cents. If you say the name to most people, they're like, who I'm like he's a great Car- running back. Play Carolina Panthers, you know. They just um loved him at Michigan, right? You know, but it was that was, but he's nothing, right? Nobody like type of a thing. So, um, you know, I remember back in the day, like I had some cards and stuff. I'm like, here, this, and yeah, you got nothing I want, kid. <laughs> like, great, you know. So, I got you know, hundred bucks back then was a shit ton of me. So probably hundred bucks worth of cards and nothing can get bought, right? Well, you know, it's funny because catcher has always been the position that I, I kind of, I'm drawn to catchers. I don't know why. I never caught. You and me both. But I'm totally drawn yeah. to catchers. And it's not like, like, I'm never sitting there going, oh my God, Johnny Bench. I'm right. sitting there going. Mike Piazza. Not even him. I'm I'm like, oh. man, you know who I really liked 1987 because Matt Noakes and, uh, Let's see. and Mike Heath yeah. behind the plate. For the Tigers, that that was great. And then in '89, I loved the fact that Rick Rona and Joe Girardi were behind the plate for the Cubs, and sometimes Damon Barry. And I, I yep. think of these people, and people are like, "Who?" Yeah, no, and that's you know, but but it's <clears throat> the things that you catch, right? Yeah. And, oh, but all right, I think we're gonna hit TikTok. So, um, everybody, like, subscribe, share. 
I'm going to start saying that in the beginning um, just so we can get people to like, subscribe, and share. Yeah. If you have show ideas, please hit us up. Um, yeah. We will be ne back next week. I don't know what we're talking about, but we'll figure it out. We'll be back Saturday, honestly, with baseball episode. Baseball. Join us. All right. So. Talk to you guys soon. You've dialed in to Box and Brews. You might hear something you can use. Like tips on your cash or tips on the suds. You're going to want to use the smarts of these studs. Because they know the brews. And they know the box. And they know they can't help the stubborn fucks. So listen up, because shit's not funny. And save yourself some beer, beer money. money. Bucks. And, and brews. brews. Bucks and brews. Bucks. And, and brews. brews. Bucks and brews. <laughs>